This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 392, On the Depth of Loss, by Tammy Strobel of RowdyKittens.com. And I'm your narrator, Joss Marie. Howdy, and welcome back to my show where I try and bring you some of the best relationship content we can find every Monday through Friday, just like an audiobook. And today, I'll actually be narrating a post from Tammy Strobel in which she shares her own experience of loss and some tips for coping with grief. And if you'd like to hear more of Tammy's posts, you can simply subscribe to make sure you don't miss any. But with that, let's jump right into Tammy's post and start optimizing your life. On the Depth of Loss by Tammy Strobel of RowdyKittens.com Quote, Hi there, Tammy. I'm sorry if I missed this information or if you've written about it in a book, but I am curious how you dealt with the length of your grief for your dad. Specifically, did anyone not understand the length or depth pressuring you to snap out of it? I recently lost my grandmother with whom I was so close. My mother, her daughter, told me to snap out of it a week after her death. It seems to irritate my family that I am still emotional, not even a month yet. I have kept my distance from them since, which makes them push me more. Not sure how to deal with all this. Thank you for any advice you can give me. Kim. End quote. Kim, I'm sorry for your loss, and I'm sorry to hear your mother and family have been pressuring you to snap out of it. It's difficult to lose a loved one, and even harder when family members don't empathize with your feelings. I feel incredibly grateful because my loved ones were empathetic and understanding after my stepdad Mullen died. However, some individuals wanted me to get over my grief. They thought I was overreacting because my dad had been ill for months. Another person told me, We all die, so what's the big deal? I was surprised by these comments and how angry they made me. When I felt spikes of anger rise, I tried to remember to breathe and remember that my feelings were valid and normal. I try to be honest about my life, both in my written work and with my loved ones. I don't like to pretend that everything is okay or happy when that isn't true, so it was hard to cope with not-so-nice comments about my grief. I'm sharing the following tools that I used and still use to cope with grief not as a blueprint for your situation, but with the hope they might benefit you in some small way. Number one, find a counselor. My loved ones were understanding and always willing to listen, yet talking to a trained professional was invaluable. It helped me find perspective and clarity surrounding my dad's death and the changing family dynamic. Number two, be open and honest even when it's hard. Typically, friends who had negative reactions toward my grief were scared of death and illness. After honest conversations with these folks, I discovered their commentary was rooted in a place of fear. Rather than getting upset, I tried to empathize with their feelings. These conversations weren't easy, but they mitigated misunderstandings. Number three, develop a journaling practice. In writing as a way of healing, Luis de Salvo said, quote, By engaging in lament, we care for ourselves. For not to express grief is to put ourselves at risk for isolation, for illness. End quote. I journal every day because my pen and paper never fail to listen. And this was especially true in the first few months after Mullen's death. Journaling about my feelings gave me a safe space to rant, rave, and lament. Number four, prioritize self-care. After I returned home from Mullen's funeral, I was exhausted. Thankfully, I listened to my intuition and prioritized sleeping, eating whole foods, and hanging out with people who understood my circumstance. I'd encourage you to slow down and prioritize self-care. And number five, engage in creative activities that bring you joy. My photography series began out of intense sadness, but it's turned into so much more. Taking my daily photo gives me the opportunity to practice gratitude, mindfulness, and it's a way to honor Malin's life. Focusing on creative projects like photography and writing has given my grief meaning. In Stitches, Anne Lamont wrote, quote, I'd given talks for years about how when it comes to grieving, the culture lies. You really do not get over the biggest losses. You don't pass through grief in any organized way and it takes years and infinitely more tears than people want to allot you. Yet, the gift of grief is incalculable and in giving you back to yourself. End quote. I wholeheartedly agree with Lamont's sentiment. We live in a culture that ignores the reality of grief, illness, and death. 
These topics can be difficult to read and talk about because they force us to face our own frailty and mortality. However, we can learn from individuals who are struggling with a serious illness, and the loss of a loved one can teach us how to live meaningful and joyful lives. Mullen died in June of 2012, and since then, the intensity of my grief has changed. The first year after Mullen's death was the hardest because there were so many firsts, like the first holiday without him and other milestones. I still miss Mullen, and I don't think that will ever change. However, his illness and death keep my daily life in perspective. Every day, I strive to create a meaningful life by working hard, making time to play, and practicing gratitude. Some days are better than others, but I always try. Be well. Tammy You just listened to the post titled, On the Depth of Loss, by Tammy Strobel of RowdyKittens.com. Talk about a powerful post and a really powerful quote by Anne Lamott, and one that I must say I totally agree with as well. I think in a lot of ways we are trained to move on quickly after experiencing loss because that's just the way our culture operates. Go, 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 and never take a second to slow down and really touch base with yourself. Unfortunately, this belief system seems to seep into all aspects of our life, including the grieving process. And I think a lot of times we just overlook or forget that people may still be coping with the loss of a loved one for a really long time after the fact. So thank you so much to Tammy for sharing her own personal experience on loss and also for the helpful tips. It's super appreciated. But that's a wrap. Thanks so much for joining me here again today. Hopefully you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll plan on seeing you again tomorrow with a post from Mark Chernoff, where your optimal life awaits.